Hey guys, it's your boy Wide Shoes coming in with another basketball shoe review. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Luka 2s. These are a $130 basketball shoe coming in from Nike. All right, so starting with standard tradition on this channel, we're going to be talking about what I like the most about the shoe and working our way down to what I like the least about the shoe. Also, at the end of this video, I will be talking about some of the differences between the Luka 1 and Luka 2s because I actually did play in the Luka 1s for a little bit of time. I just never got around to making a review for them. And yeah, let's just get right into the review. All right, so let's just get into what I like the most about the Luka 2s. Well, it's definitely going to be the lockdown of these shoes and the support as well. I'm going to give the lockdown in the Luka 2s a 9 out of 10 off rip. Um, basically, the lacing system is extremely effective in these shoes. The synthetic material that they're made out of is a little bit weird, but the shoe is very comfortable when you crank the laces. Also, there is quite a bit of ability to adjust the shoe on the fly. So for me, sometimes I have to relace my shoes, but with the Luka 2s, I always found that it was easy to find, I guess, which band I needed to tighten on the shoe. And also, the shoe has a pretty wide and stable base. And also, if you look at the shoe, it is very stiff and it's very smooth in heel to toe transition. So basically what that combination does for the lockdown is it prevents the shoe from buckling. I'm 200 pounds. I'm a little bit bigger for a guard. I would say I'm, I'm a big boy and changing directions in shoes that are too flexible can cause my foot to take the blunt of that force. But when the shoe is very smooth like this and it is very stiff, it just makes the Luka 2 contain my foot and prevent me from having any foot injuries or from feeling any force of actually turning my body. So it definitely allowed me to make sharp cuts, do step backs, and kind of do sharp changes without having to worry about my foot or my body getting injured. Also, I want to say for the lockdown, there is no heel slippage and there is a high arch in the shoe. I have high arches and I found it very supportive. And it made a very snug but comfortable fit in the shoe. So if you're looking for something that really supports you and really locks you down, especially if you're heavier and you're moving from left to right a lot or you're making sharp cuts, this is a very, very, very good option. All right, so moving into my second favorite part of the shoe, it's definitely going to be the materials of the Luka 2. Now, the materials I'm going to give an 8 out of 10. They are very overkill, especially in comparison to the Luka 1s. Um, as you can see here, there is kind of this synthetic leather cage that just wraps around the whole shoe. This feels kind of like a classic Jordan in a weird way, but it still feels modern. Also, although these materials aren't super soft or plush, they are very supportive and they do add to the lockdown even more. Personally, I have played in this shoe for quite some time now, three times a week for about two hours for the last month. And the shoe does have some creases, but the shoe has molded to my foot due to the materials they used. And I also can tell that this shoe is going to last a long time. If you're someone who's looking for a single shoe to wear for a whole season and you're a little bit worried about your budget, this is probably your best um, option from Nike currently. I will say the tongue here also has a very unique feature. Now, I originally thought that this kind of white foam here was weird. It is really just kind of like foam. But what I realized it was doing was preventing the laces from choking my foot. And I often like to crank my laces, but can't do that in a lot of shoes because it cuts into my, I guess, veins on my foot. But this system prevented it. So basically for materials, the reason why I'm giving them an 8 out of 10 is because they are very good for the price. The shoe is going to last a long time and the materials clearly serve a purpose. It adds to the shoe's strength, which is locked down. And I really have no complaints. I will say the shoe is a little bit hot. It doesn't have the most breathable, I guess, experience, if you will. But for me personally, I think these shoes are really good in durability. The only reason why I would not give them a 10 out of 10 or a 9 is just because I feel like if you were to play outdoors on this traction, even though it is pretty thick and not extremely pliable, I think playing outdoors would um, ruin the translucent um, outsole over time. So I'm just going to have to knock them down a little bit for the traction's durability, but everything else about the shoe is really good. All right, so moving into my third favorite part of the shoe, it's definitely going to be the traction. Now, 
I'm going to give the traction an 8 out of 10. I know a lot of people will argue with me and say that the traction is actually better on the Luka 2s, but I did experience one pretty concerning or just annoying issue with the traction, and that's basically that all of the colorways so far have translucent outsoles. Now, for me personally, translucent outsoles perform well on my basketball court that I play at, but the shoe does collect a lot of dust. And what I would find is that I would make really good sharp cuts with no issues, but then randomly it would be like the bridge collapse. Basically the shoe just all at once just slides out. So the only way to counter this is to preemptively wipe your shoe before you feel like it loses traction, but doing that completely solves the issue. So basically the traction performs itself at about a nine out of 10, but because it collects dust and randomly just all at once shuts off, you have to preemptively wipe. And if you don't do that, you will slide out. But that's not a huge problem to have. I just wipe between the plays or when the ball's dead or even, you know, if my teammate steals the ball, I might not run down the court. I might just wipe my shoe while he scores a layup. You know, it, it's not groundbreaking. It's not a deal breaker. But yeah, it was a little bit disappointing to just have the shoe just go offline with no warning. So yeah, that's what I think about the traction. All right. So moving into my fifth favorite part about the shoe, it's going to be the cushioning. Now, I know a lot of people complain that the cushioning of the Luka 2s is not the best. I do agree with that to some extent. But from my own personal experience, I had no joint pain. I had no feet pain. I really had no cushion related issues with this shoe. And that's just because the insole of the shoe is very good. The shock absorption is very good. And the heel to toe transition is very, very good. And that does, in fact, make up for a lot of the shortcomings of the cushioning. I'm going to give the cushioning a 7.8 out of 10. And that's just purely because when you put on the shoe, it is nowhere near as stiff as the Luka ones, and it doesn't even feel like a, I guess, brick shoe. But if you really want a plush shoe, this may not be the best option for you. I will say they use Formula 23 in this shoe, and a lot of people are not a fan currently of Formula 23 in the Jordan brand, but this Formula 23 is the softest foam or like version of the foam I've ever used. So don't let the Formula 23 tag fool you. It's the best iteration of Formula 23, in my opinion. And I really didn't have a lot of issues with cushioning. Again, I'm only giving this a 7.8 out of 10, just because when you put your foot in the shoe, you don't feel like the most cushioning ever. It's not like the Cosmic Unity 2s. I will say it is actually more cushion maybe than the Cosmic Unity 3s, which is kind of funny. But yeah, I think that the shock absorption is good, the insole is good, the heel to toe transition is good, and the, I guess, smoothness of the shoe is there. So I personally didn't have a big issue with cushioning, and I am heavily catered towards really cushioned shoes. So for me, I don't think you should worry about the cushioning, but I know a lot of people may feel like it's maybe just a little bit insufficient. All right, so now we're going to be moving into what I didn't like about the shoe. And this is a fairly short list because I actually do like the Luka 2s a lot. But one of the things I did not like about the Luka 2s was the fit. For me personally, the shoe does run ever so slightly long. A lot of reviewers were saying that the shoe was incredibly long, and I do not agree with that at all. It's just ever so slightly long. Because the shoe is ever so slightly long, there is ever so slightly dead space in the toe here. And when you're on your tiptoes, the shoe does get compressed because of your front toes. But this never created any issues for me. Also, even though the shoe is ever so slightly long, I experienced zero heel slippage and the shoe felt completely fine on foot. When I played in these, it was a pretty good fit. I never felt like uh, like I wasn't secure or like my foot was swimming around in the shoe. And I have extremely short feet that are very wide. So even though I'm a wide footer, I just went true to size. I went with an 11 and that fit me very well. So I don't think you should be too concerned about the shoe being too long. Also, for reference, for my sizes, I am a 10.5 in the Tatum 1s. I'm an 11 in the LeBron 20s, 11 in the LeBron NXTs. I'm an 11 in pretty much every other Nike shoe than that. And I'm a 10.5 in the James Harden Volume 7s. So... I guess you could say I technically have to size it up, but overall, I, I think most of you guys will be fine going true to size. All right, so moving now into the last part of the shoe or the part of the shoe that I like the least, 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 it's definitely going to be this little, I don't know how you call this, this clip here. Now, 
One of the reasons why I never finished the Luca One review for you guys was because it also inside the shoe had this clip that had a raised bump in the shoe and that has always caused pain. Whenever a shoe has kind of a little bit of a bump on the outer edge here for support, that always just digs into my foot. I, I don't need that in shoes. I can see what it's for, but that did kind of create a little bit of foot pain when I played in these shoes. I know a few other reviewers who have wide feet have said that this clip can cause foot pain. Now, in the Luca ones, the foot pain that I got from those on that outer edge with whatever was in the shoe on the outer side was debilitating. I literally could not wear that shoe anymore. I thought that I tore something in my foot from wearing them. But with the Luca twos, I don't have that same level of issue. I will say I do sometimes have to come off the court because the outer edge of the shoe does hurt my foot. But everything else about the shoe is perfect for my foot. The high arch support, the step in comfort, the cushioning. It's just, yeah, there's a little bit of an issue with my foot personally here. I've only seen a few other reviewers with extremely wide feet like myself complain about it, but I did want to just add that into the video. I know it's not a specific category, but I guess you could just say I don't like this clip that much. And if you're someone who has a bit of issues with the outer part of the shoe, the, the part that runs along your pinky toe, I should say, if of that side of your foot ever gets hurt by shoes, that could happen in the Luca 2s. It did happen for me, but it wasn't as debilitating as the ones, and I am still able to play through it or just rotate these and not wear them three times a week. Bringing it down to one time per week fix that issue. And before I give you guys my overall thoughts, I'm going to just list off the differences between the Luca 1 and the Luca 2. This is just a rapid fire list from what I've personally felt. And the biggest difference is going to be that the Luca 2s are not as low to the ground. However, this does not mean that the shoes are super high off the ground. It's just that the Luca 1s were extremely low to the ground with extreme court feel. Whereas these, the Luca 2s, are just kind of an average shoe. They're not high off the ground but they're not as low to the ground as the Luca 1s. Also, the traction, it's about the same. Um, I would say maybe in the 1s, it's ever so slightly better. I think that may just be a placebo, but from what I remember, the 1s were just a little bit better in my experience. The Luca 2s, they're a lot more durable, they're a lot more stable, and they're a lot stiffer, and the lacing system is significantly better and feels less like a brick or a weird, like, I just didn't like the Luca One's lockdown system. It felt really retro. And also, me personally, the materials are an upgrade and the shoe just feels a lot more overkill, although it is ever so slightly heavier. However, the shoe is not a heavy shoe. It's just not as lightweight as the Luca One's. All right, so what are my overall thoughts of the Luca 2s? Well, I'm going to give these an 84 out of 100. Additionally, I'm going to say you should at least try these. I think if you have extremely wide feet, you should buy them online just in case you have issues with them. But for $130, you really can't get a better deal. Basically, if you're someone who's balling on a budget and you want a shoe that can last you a whole season, I think these are the best option from Nike. I think they're very reliable, they're very consistent, and they're a very good, somewhat budget option. I think that I would even still recommend these if they were upwards of $150, but luckily they're only $130. Also, I think that almost every player is gonna like these, but if you're a little bit bigger like me and you're still a guard or you're just a fast, big forward, you'll really like these shoes because they really provide you with a lot of safety. And yeah, I think these are a buy and you should definitely try them out and that's it.